Hey everyone, and welcome back. Recently, I gave you a tour of my home lab, and a lot of you are really interested in my highly available firewall setup. Yeah, that's right. I run two firewalls in an active passive setup. Now, just to go over a quick recap of that, the reason I do it is twofold. Firstly, I want redundancy. So I wanna be able to tinker and break my lab with some failover that doesn't impact the rest of the family. Secondly, well, it's quite a cool technology, right? Lots of enterprises will have highly available firewalls and I wanna replicate and play with that in my home lab so that I can improve my learning. So the way I do this is with Sophos XG, but you could use anything that supports high availability. So something like PFSense or OpenSense or any of the other firewalls, things like Cisco's that you could probably get secondhand. Unfortunately, things like the UDM Pro, they don't support HA, but if you had one of those, you would probably be thinking, well, I don't need two firewalls because it's a separate discrete device. And that's absolutely fine, and you would be correct in that assumption. But I wanted to learn high availability. So in this video, that's what I'm gonna cover. I'll talk you through how I've got this connected through to things like the physical wiring that takes place, the creation of the VMs within Proxmox on two physical nodes, and then the configuration steps that are needed to make sure that those two firewalls can talk to each other and then seamlessly fail over. So let's start off with a quick recap of my home lab configuration and a network diagram. So hopping on over to my Proxmox box, you can see that I've got the two physical nodes. Those are represented by my Proxmox Asus box and my Proxmox Dell, which is my Dell R730 server. And if you look closely, you can see that I've got the passive on the weaker box and I've got my active on my Dell R730. And I've handily named those active and passive, so there's no confusion. Let's have a quick look at what those actually look like in terms of a VM configuration. So if I click on the active, and then I click on the hardware, and here you can see the setup of my active Sophos XG firewall. And this is replicated on my other node, as you can see here. So, What's going on here? Well, I do recommend you go and watch my video of how to install this as I show that process virtually. But in a nutshell, we're basically creating a virtual firewall with three network devices. That's because we need one for the WAN, one for the LAN, and one for the HA link. Now, I've done this with three separate physical network adapters, but technically you could do it with two because you could put the HA link on a separate VLAN on the LAN port. But I recommend you go and use three if you can, just to make it easier in terms of concepts and physical wires going from A to B. It also rules out the issue of having to create different VLANs and routing it through your switch, etc. In terms of horsepower you need for this, you can see that I'm only using four gigs of RAM and two cores. So it's pretty lightweight and it's still really powerful in terms of functionality you're not really going to be making this thing sweat unless you're pushing things like 10 gig networking through it, which even in my case, I do 10 gig with IPS and IDS and it still works perfectly fine for me. So go away and have a look at my installation video. And now we'll have a quicker look at my network and where these feed into it. So I've shown this network diagram before and it's a very high level overview of my setup. So if you go back and look at my home lab tour and think about it in terms of what you're seeing on the screen now, that will help you out. So the key thing here is we've got internet traffic coming in to my modem, which is then routed to my firewall, my router. And you'll see that this then has a connection to both my Proxmox nodes and all my services run off the back of those and are on different VLANs depending on whether they're an internal service or an external service. But let's focus on this bit here, which is the key bit of the puzzle. So in my home lab tour, I told you that my internet, i.e. on that previous screenshot, we saw the modem going into the router. That's not technically true. If you look on my switch here and look at port one, that is actually my internet going into my switch. And that's the key to making this work. Or at least in my case, I'm assuming you've got one ISP and one switch. So what's happening here is the internet is going into port one on my switch, and that's actually a VLAN comprising of three ports. In this case, port one, port two, and port three. Now, port one, the internet goes in, port two and three, 
those are the respective WAN ports on my virtual firewalls on those two discrete machines. So that enables me to split one ISP connection between two firewalls. So that's great for failover because when one firewall fails, the next one can pick it up and that WAN connection is still shared. And in terms of the other connections on the firewall, you can see that they both have a 10 gig uplink here. So one of those 10 gigs goes into one firewall, one 10 gig goes into the other, and that gives me still the 10 gig throughput across my network, irrespective of which firewall it is. And here's the example of my backup Proxmox node, which houses my passive, i.e. my failover, Sophos XG. And you can see on here that I've got three network adapters in there. One of those is the 10 gig card, which is the 10 gig LAN uplink. And the other one is just an I210, a one gigabyte connection, which acts as that HA link, that high availability link. And in terms of what this looks like on the back, that's pretty much it. One of those is the WAN, one of those is the LAN, one of those is the HA, and the rest of it, they're all carved up to different virtual machines that are running on this physical machine. So in order to connect this up and make it work, you'll see that I've got a Unify switch. And if I go on to the Unify switch and I look at the port manager, you can see that ports one, two, and three are all part of this XG VLAN that I've called the WAN on VLAN 999. No other devices on my network are connected to that, and that's important from a security perspective. Otherwise, those devices would have direct, i.e. unfiltered, not going through my firewall, access to the internet, and I don't want that. So to get this working, whatever switch you're using, I think the Unify switches are great, but whatever switch you're using, you want to set up a similar exclusive VLAN just for the ports that you're gonna use in your respective firewalls. So when you've configured all of those VLANs and you've got the virtual machines up and running, your switch will probably look something like this, where on the left hand of my switch, I've got the internet split between the respective WAN ports. Over on the right hand side, I've got the respective LAN ports. Both of those are going into 10 gig ports. And importantly, the bit that's not on screen at the moment is the HA link between the two firewalls. So why is that important? Well, the HA link is basically a bit like a ping. It's a way that one firewall talks to the other. And it notes that if one stops responding, it's likely down. So then it kicks into motion and becomes the primary. And that's a really cool setup. You can do this in a active active mode and both of the firewalls will load balance, but that can have issues with direct connections because some traffic might be routed through one firewall and one might be routed through the other. And that's not good for certain types of applications, things like voice recording, etc. So I've opted to do this with a direct connection between the two physical machines. You could route this through a switch or even on the same VLAN using the same LAN port as I mentioned before. So now that we've covered the physical setup, let's jump into Sophos itself and let's see how we actually configure this to work. Thankfully, it's really straightforward thanks to the use of things like auto discovery. So over in Sophos XG, you'll find the high availability settings in system services and the default high availability tab. And this is what it looks like when it's all set up and running. You can see that I've got my primary set to active and my auxiliary set to passive. That's because I'm in the active passive mode. Now to get here, there's a couple of steps you need to take first. The first thing to be aware of is that both firewalls on port A, which is that default LAN setup, need to be on the same subnet. So you could have, in my instance, I'm on 16801. You could put the other firewall on 0.2. Now that's important because both of these devices need to be on the same network so that when everything fails over, your default LAN is still on the same subnet. Otherwise, it's gonna break things because certain devices might be coded for certain LANs and they're just not gonna work otherwise. So you'll need to configure that either within your DHCP or on your switch, but the process should be exactly the same as just replicating the first installation step of your Sophos XG i.e. put it on the same network. Once it's on the same network, we can then start getting into the HA. And so for all you lovely folk, I've spun up a new instance of Sophos XG to walk you through exactly the steps that you need to take. 
So this is different. You can see it's my admin at Sophos XG demo, but the process is pretty straightforward. So let's head over to system services and we'll automatically be on the high availability tab. And what we need to do is very little. It's already set up as primary in that active passive mode, which I recommend you keep. And quick HA mode, quick high availability mode is already selected. And that's good because it's gonna do a lot of the auto configuration for us. There is a manual process, but it's not advised. The only thing you probably want to do here is to change the node name. And that's just to make it easy and convenient to understand. So I'm gonna change this to primary just using the vernacular that is up here. And I'm gonna change the second one to be the auxiliary. So the last thing we need to do here is to add an item for that direct HA link. And this is the exact reason why we added three network interface cards to this virtual machine. So port A is our LAN, port B is our WAN, and port C is gonna be our HA link. So this is the port that is gonna connect from this virtual machine into the other virtual machine. So we're gonna apply that, and then we're gonna click Initiate HA. When we click Initiate HA, this is gonna be sending a ping or a request out over that HA link to the other firewall. Now that's not gonna work because we need to go into the auxiliary firewall now and configure it up in pretty much the same way but instead of doing primary, we're gonna select the auxiliary and we're gonna paste this password into it and we're gonna select the same interface, port C. So when we do that, this our active firewall is gonna be sending that request. The secondary firewall is gonna be set up to listen to that request. And if those passwords match, it's gonna say, hey, yeah, you're verified to be my passive and active firewall partner and we're good to go. So I'll show you that very quickly, but it's really straightforward. So over on your other firewall, you just want it simply set up like this. So auxiliary, we still want it in that quick HA mode. I've renamed it to the auxiliary or call it passive, whatever you want. Put the password in and then choose the port where you've got the HA link, i.e. that ethernet port from one to the other. And you should be good to go. You'll just need to click initiate HA and then within a few seconds, Light should start flashing, everything should be up and running, and with any luck, you should end up back at this page that I showed you previously, where you'll have your primary and your auxiliary set up. It will define the active and passive roles, and it will give you some extra configuration steps should you want to tweak it, but I recommend you leave as is. So now you should have high availability configured within your network, and that enables you to go ahead and play with your home lab, break things, follow my videos, and hopefully have a get out of jail free card with the rest of the family. And if you've also followed my other videos using things like Gotify to get notifications, and also if you followed my firewall video to set up notifications and alert with SMTP within Sophos, whenever a transition between the active and passive happens, you should get notified. And <laughs> During this demo, I managed to break my firewall by stupidly changing the active firewall instead of this demo firewall. And handily, I got these messages that you can see on screen now. And that was reassuring just to know that it was working. And it was also a good impromptu test that my failover still works. So I hope you found this video useful and it's given you the confidence to go ahead and set up an HA firewall. Don't worry if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. I was the same when I first started out. I wasn't sure what to expect. It sounded like a nightmare. But hopefully as I've shown you, it's a really simple setup with just a few clicks within the web GUI. And you should have this up and running in no time. Probably the most complicated bit is just sorting out the VLANs in your head and making sure that the physical ports that you're passing through on your Proxmox hosts are the ones that you think you're connecting. Sometimes it can get a bit confusing around MAC addresses, but there's a little sneaky trick to that and I've sequentially ordered my MAC addresses, i.e. I've manually assigned them, so I know exactly which physical NIC aligns to the virtual NIC inside Sophos, and that's really helpful. So let me know what you think about HA firewalls. Is this something that you're gonna set up, or is it something you just can't be bothered to do? I think it's really useful. I've been using it for a couple of years, and I can't see myself stopping it. But let me know in the comments below. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, 
please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.